Thanks so much. It's uh, wonderful to be here this evening. I want to especially thank the Dean for uh, the invitation uh, as part of his series, Distinguished uh, Speaker Series, and all of you for, uh, for uh, uh, what I hope will be an enlightening evening for you. Can you hear me in the back row? Is it scary back there? It's really scary up here. Um, we angels are thought by entrepreneurs to be relatively scary. Uh, but um, I've got a couple of interns. Eric and Emma, am I scary? No, good, that's, that's good to hear. Um, when I was in Wellington um, about a month ago, maybe six weeks ago, um, we held a meet the angel night, which is a sort of flip the coin. Let's have the angels present to the entrepreneurs to sort of uh, make it a little more comfortable, uh, show the human side perhaps, if there is one, of uh, angel investors. Um, and I participated in that event. And um, one brash young entrepreneur said to me in a question, yeah, yeah, I can tell that you've done well, but do you do good? And my hosts went, oh, I could hear the audible uh, drawing in of breath because Kiwis are too polite to ask something like that of a visitor. Um, and I gave the, um, the uh, entrepreneur a relatively brief response, one that I was uh, somewhat comfortable with, but it led me to actually direct my attention at tonight's lecture, and that's really what I want to talk to you about tonight. Um, I want to talk to you about my, my thesis being that we angel investors are engaged in starting lots of companies, and those companies create lots of jobs, and the wealth that is created by our entrepreneurial ventures um, uh, is reused in starting more companies and doing good things around the world. So let's see how I do in addressing this, um, th this thesis. So here's the agenda for the evening. I think to get us all sort of on the same and a level playing field, I need to talk a little bit about the capital food chain and maybe a little bit about trends in angel investing. And then I want to get down to the meat of the subject of the evening. So this is a very complex slide. <clears throat> it shows the, the capital food chain or the capital life cycle of entrepreneurial ventures. At the very outset, uh, entrepreneurs use their own money, and uh, of course, they just have an idea at this point, so there's no chance that there's any profit or earnings involved, and the sum of profits in the company start on the red line, uh, decreasing, um, and after a while, it's time to look to friends and family, or perhaps government sources, uh, for funds of germinating that idea into a product that can be shown to a customer. At about the time um, entrepreneurs first engage with customers is the time that we angel investors uh, get engaged with entrepreneurs. Um, we want to talk to the customers. We want to make sure that this product is a must-have, not just a nice-to-have. So we want to talk to the customers because, of course, every entrepreneur believes that any product they've ever created is a must-have. So we can't quite believe the customers when it comes to, I'm sorry, the entrepreneurs, when it comes to validation we need to have the word of uh, the customers themselves. 
That's the engagement of angels. Venture capitalists are later stage investors. They tend to engage when the company is close to break even and provide the growth and the expansion capital uh, to entrepreneurs. They have much deeper pockets than do we and therefore put more money in the company as the company grows. And of course, public markets and banks uh, are much later in the life cycle. Life cycle. <clears throat> so let me tell you a bit about what's going on in angel investing. Just who are these fellows? Well, or gals, and there are both. Uh, they tend to be uh, experienced business persons and entrepreneurs, so they can share their business savvy with uh, entrepreneurs. They are investing both their time and money in uh, entrepreneurial ventures at the startup stage. And they're investing their mad money. What might their mad money be? Well, it's the money, the same money they would take to Vegas. It's not money that they anticipate uh, getting a return on investment. They would like a return on investment, but they're not counting on that money uh, for their retirement, that's for sure. This is three to perhaps 10% of their net worth that they've set aside for this kind of investment, this asset class, and active investing in startup ventures. Now, this is very high risk investment, uh, one in 10 of our investments provides all the upside return on investment to us. The best we can expect from the other nine is return of capital in the sum. About half of our ventures go under. So this is uh, a crapshoot. This is uh, a commodities option. This is high risk investing. So to assure some chance of success uh, on the positive side, we have to have a diversified portfolio. So 10, 12, 15 investments is the, uh, the appropriate number to shoot for during the lifetime of an angel investor. Now if you invest in 10 or 12 companies and you're an active investor, you sure don't want to be on 10 or 12 boards. So we tend to invest in groups, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15 of us investing in the same round, in the same company, and the most qualified person usually takes on the mentoring or the board seat. One or two of those angels will be involved. So in some companies, we're very actively involved, perhaps as a director, and in other companies, we might be totally passive. So we're active investors, but that doesn't mean we're active in every company. So let's talk a little bit about the activity of angel investors in the US. It's a big endeavor. Uh, we angel investors on the sum annually invest about $20 billion in startup companies. About half of them at the seed and startup stage, sort of the first round of investment. The other half of those investments are in companies that we funded last year and they ran out of cash, so we've got to put a little bit more money in those companies to try to get them to positive cash flow. We're touching 50,000 companies per year in the US, and as I said, engaging in uh, mentoring and coaching of those companies. And in the last 15 years or so, since Hans Severin showed us how, when he started the Band of Angels, we've discovered that we're much more efficient and um, much more capable at looking at a large number of deals and finding good investments if we join and work with an angel group or an angel organization. 